The beta version of Elemental Pro 3.15 has just dropped and with it are a couple of new features. The one that I'm interested in is the new taxonomy filter widget, which we'll take a look at in a moment. If you want to check out everything that's included in this update, take a look at Imran's video over at Web Squadron, link in the description, check that out. He's going to go into more detail than I am in this video. So as always, I will link to the GitHub article on exactly what's included, how you can test it for yourself. That'll be linked in the description down below. Now, as always, this is a alpha or beta feature and you do need to enable it. I'm using the developer's edition of Elementor and Elementor Pro so I can test these out. But I believe you'll also get access to these just using the standard normal beta version of Elementor and Elementor Pro. Now, to get access to this, what you need to do is come into Elementor, into settings, into features, and scroll right the way down until you get to the option that says taxonomy filter. Go ahead, set that to be active and make sure you've also got any of the other pre requirements like the gloop and the grid builder options available to you. And then you should have access to it. Now, as always, only use this on a test server. Do not use this on a live website or you are absolutely asking for trouble. So let's head over to the blank page that I've created. I've got a simple two column layout. We're going to pop in a loop in the right hand side. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll just do a search for loop builder. There's our loop grid. We'll pop that over in the right hand side. We'll choose the template that I've already created. We can then go ahead and configure anything we want. So let's set this to be two columns. And we'll say we want to have 12 items on the page. So we now have our loop grid created. So once we've done that, we can go ahead and configure anything else we want. So we'll say we want these to be equal height. And we're not going to worry about a query. We're going to leave that as it is. But if you open that up, you can see this is basically just set to include posts. That's all pretty cool. Now let's come back over and let's go ahead and search for filter. Let's go ahead and drop in our taxonomy filter into the left hand section. This now asks us to choose a loop grid, which is the grid that we have over on the right hand side. So we're going to drop that down. We only actually have one here. So we'll say loop grid one. And that will say, now choose a taxonomy. What do we want to use to filter it? Let's open the option up. And we currently only have categories and tags. But obviously, if you had custom taxonomies and so on, you could select those from here as well. Or at least you will be able to when the final is released. We'll click on categories. And you see that now drops in all the categories that we have as part of our normal posts. We can now choose whether we want this to be horizontal or vertical. We'll set them to be vertical. And then you can pop the alignment the way that you want. And obviously, you can adjust the sizing and spacing to do what you want. And you can go ahead and customize every aspect of these to make sure everything's styled the way you want to. So let's go ahead and test this out. Let's publish it. And now you see we have all these options. We can click. That will then start to filter things out. You can see we've got two here. Try this one. We've got a few more. So it's all pretty simple. It is relatively quick. You can see there's no massive sort of waiting around for this. I'm simply using SiteGround shared hosting plan, so nothing particularly powerful. And everything works out quite nicely. How this would scale with hundreds, maybe thousands of posts with multiple categories, only time will kind of tell. This is still a pretty much alpha stroke beta product. Let's take a look at the settings. Now, there's not a lot of settings inside you at this point in time, but there are a couple that allow you to customize things. You can choose whether you want to hide or show any categories that have empty items included. In other words, there's nothing in there. Whether you want to show taxonomy children, so you can choose that option, and then you can specify how deep you want to go. So if you are organizing things into subcategories, you can set how far or how deep you want these to go. So you'll see if we disable that, we've got this many items. If we enable it, you can see we get a couple more. You kind of get the idea. It will start to expand based upon the number of levels of categories you've got. So subcategories, sub subcategories, and so on. So that's the basics. Now you may be asking, well, this is okay, but what if you have something you want to filter by more things? Let's just say you have tags associated and you like to filter by a taxonomy as in your category and a taxonomy like a tag. Well, you can do that. What you need to do is go ahead and create another one of these. So let's just duplicate this. Let's choose our second one and let's just change something. Let's just say filter by tag. We'll change the layout and from there, we'll change this from categories and set this to be tags. Now, currently I have no tags set up. So let's go ahead and add a couple of tags in and see how this all works. So go ahead, created a couple of tags. And as you can see, I've associated those with a range of different posts. So now if we hop back into that page we just created, we now see on the left hand side, we've got our taxonomies and tags and you can see there's article and news. 
Now, I've created three tags, only two are showing up, and that's because we've got this set to basically hide. So if we say, don't hide empty, you can see that will show everything. Now, as you can see, there's a bit of a strange discrepancy. It's not wrapping the items on here, so you may need to go in and adjust your styling. But for now, I'm going to disable the empty items. Let's go ahead and publish this, and let's test things out. So there's our page. Let's go and filter this. Let's click on the first one. You can see that now filters things out. Let's try applying one of these. And as you can see, that now applies two filters. And if we take a look at the URL, you can see this is what's actually being passed over. Now, this isn't the nicest looking uh, sort of URL, not the easiest to share. So I'd like to see that tidied up to make something just a little bit simpler. Because at the moment, this is a little bit, bit long-winded. But not the end of the world. So that's how easy it is to go about creating these filters. We can stack them on top of each other, which is always good to see. So I'm glad to see that we can actually build up more comprehensive filters using this methodology. But as always, what are your thoughts on this? Tell me in the comment section down below. Now, if you want to check out more about this, test it out for yourself, find out all the new updates and so on, check out the GitHub article linked in the description. And also take a look at Imran's video from Web Squadron to see his take on this and any of the other the features that have been added in with this new beta release. As always, I'd love to get your feedback. Let me know in the comment section down below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. Until next time, take care.